All praise. All right, family. Shalom. Most high Christ bless you all. All right, the name of the class today is Predestinated for Greatness. You belong here. Okay? Predestinated for Greatness. You belong here. Okay? So, uh, we're going to start off, and the whole basis of the entire chapter is going to be, or the entire class is going to be based off Ephesians chapter 1. All right? I uh, had about an hour flight with a brother last night to get back to Jackson. And uh, we went over Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? But before we get into it, matter of fact, let's start off in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, regarding the Apostle Paul's writings. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, mm -hmm. as they do also the other scriptures. So the Bible talks about, and this is the head apostle, the one that Christ left in charge, right? Peter. And Peter is writing about the Apostle Paul and how that the Apostle Paul, in the letters that he wrote, it was some things in there that were hard to be understood. And if you was unlearned and unstable, you will wrestle with it, as do the other scriptures, mean the Old Testament. When you see our people going to Paul's letters to try to contradict what we're teaching, a lot of times they're stumbling, okay? Well, not a lot of times, oftentimes, all the time, damn it, they stumbling. Because what, they do, what they're trying to use Paul to do is to contradict us having to keep the commandments and who salvation is for, oftentimes, right? So first and foremost, before we even get into Paul's writings, understand that Paul's writings are not easy for the average brother or sister that claim to believe in the Bible. The only way to understand Paul is to go to uh, Psalms 111.10. The only way to, to understand Paul is this, Psalms 111, verse 10. Psalms chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You must fear God first. First and foremost, you must fear God. Go ahead. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. And a good understanding of, of the scriptures have all they that do his commandments. Go ahead. His praise endureth forever. And his praise endures forever. So you have to keep the commandments to understand the writings of the apostle Paul. Now, Paul was expert in precept upon precept. And that's what you have to understand. A lot of times when we read Paul's writings or when people read Paul's writings to try to contradict us, what they'll do is they'll go to certain parts of his writings without understanding that he's pulling that from somewhere else. And you read, out, read about, about that, all, especially Romans 9. In Romans 9, he literally pulled precepts from various different texts throughout the Old Testament. That's literally what he's doing. But then we do that, and they say, well, you're not reading it right. You're isogeting the scripture. Well, then was Paul isogeting the scripture? Because everything that he was pulling from, you do realize the entire context was not talking about that part of the, that, that part of the passage. This is what they don't understand. So the only way to, 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 to understand God's words is to keep his commandments. That's it. Now go to Psalms 119, verse 104. Psalms 119, verse 104. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 104. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Through what? Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Read. Therefore, I hate every false way. So King David backed it up. He said it again. He said, listen, the only way to get understanding of God's words is through his precepts. You can read the Bible all day by all means. You know how somebody go to jail and they read the Bible. And they say, man, I was in jail. I read the Bible five times. Then you say, okay, well, what day the Sabbath day? And they be like, I don't know, Sunday? You read it five times you don't know the Sabbath day or the seventh day of the week? Or you've been in church your whole life reading the Bible from cover to cover like my grandfather. I love my grandfather. I, I think he watches our, vid our videos now. But when I first came in the truth, he rejected everything I was trying to show him because he's a pastor. You know what I mean? And he had been teaching church for 40 years, 30 years, whatever, in church 35 years, deacon, bishop, whatever. So then when I bring understand the truth to him, you're like, that ain't what that mean. That ain't what that mean. That's not what they're talking about. Okay, I said, okay, whatever. The Bible says you must understand the precepts. That's how you get understanding. Keeping the commandments of God, precept upon precept. Okay? Now go to Ephesians chapter 1. Predestinated for greatness. 
You belong here. All right, read that. Ephesians chapter 1. You want to start at verse 1? Yes, sir. In verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Go ahead. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So I read the first five verses because I wanted y'all to get a gist of what is being said here. First and foremost, the Ephesians were Israelites. I'm going to say it again. The Ephesians were were Israelites. Notice it says, Paul, in verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. Which are at Ephesus. And they're saints. Could you read that for me? Psalms 148. How do we know who the saints are? In your Bibles, you should underline saints. And to the left-hand side or right-hand side, whatever you want, you should put Psalms chapter 148, verse 14. So then when you look and you're reading this, you will go to the precept to show you who the saints are. Psalms 148, verse 14. Psalms chapter 148, verse 14. Yep. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. Even means indeed. Indeed, the children of Israel. Go ahead. A people near unto him. A people near unto him. All Praise right? you the Lord. Praise you the Lord. So go back to Ephesians 1 verse 1 again. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. by the will of God. Read. To the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. To the saints which are at Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus. Who are those saints at Ephesus? Those are the Israelites. The Israelites are the saints at Ephesus. You never read about an Edomite saint. You never read about a Moabite saint. You never read about an Amalekite saint. You don't read it. The only saints are the 12, 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now go to Acts chapter 19, verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 19 and verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So notice this. Brothers and sisters, disciples in Ephesus. He asked them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Believe on who? Christ. Because being scattered in Ephesus, they did not grow up understanding Christ. They did not grow up in understanding of, of the laws of Moses. They didn't grow up like their brethren, right? I'm going I'm to show you how you know that. Go back one chapter to chapter 18, and I want you to go to um, 24. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Yep. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. He came to Ephesus. Read. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So this brother here, this brother here, uh, Apollos, he came to Ephesus, and he had understanding of the scriptures. He didn't quite know Christ yet, but he could, he could really teach the baptism of John. The Bible said he was mighty in the scriptures. The brother was well studied. Skip down to verse 28. Verse 28. But he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. He showed who? Showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Who was he teaching? Go ahead, verse 28. Verse 28. But he mightily convinced the Jews. He said he mightily convinced the Jews. Those disciples were Jews. So who were the people at Ephesus? Jews. Also, northern kingdom Israelites that grew up under the guys of Greece, okay? Understanding only Greek. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2. 
Grace be to you and peace from God our Father. Grace be to who? Those Jews and those northern kingdom Israelites in Ephesus, those saints. They receive grace through Christ. Go ahead. And peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So it said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Go to John 14, verse 2. What does that mean? What, what does he mean? blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Let's see. The book of John, chapter 14. Let's read verse 2. John 14, verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. In, in my father's house are many mansions. That means realms. In the house of God, there are many realms. Y'all got to understand, everything that you've learned about the Bible, your imagination as it comes to the Bible, has been whitewashed. When you think about the Bible, you think about old white men with long white beards and wearing togas. You understand? Poor with sandals on, blisters on their foot in the desert. And that's not biblical. The Bible is talking about something that the world would call space. You understand? When you go into space and galaxies and dimensions, that's what the Bible is talking about when it says many mansions. There are planets we've never seen. There are galaxies we can't fathom. There are realms and dominions that we've never seen or known in our lives, and we can't even imagine. There's a spiritual world that is amongst us that our eyes are not enlightened right now to see. The Lord has not opened up our spiritual eye in that, in, to that capacity where we can see these things. So that's why it says, in my Father's house are many mansions. It ain't talking about no 37,000 square foot upstairs, downstairs, house in Miami. When it's talking about mansions, it's talking about realms. Different realms. Go ahead, read again. In my father's house are many mansions. There are many realms in the house of God. Go ahead. If it were not so, I would have told you. Read. I go to prepare a place for you. So when Christ died, he went before us to, to prepare a place for us. Go ahead. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself. When he come again, that's the second time he return. Go ahead. That where I am, there ye may be also. And where I am, you may be also. Ooh. That's heavy. Where I am, you may be also. That's the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He went to prepare a way for the Israelites that would call to be saints. That believed on him. This is why I said, listen, you was predestinated for greatness. You belong here. You, this is where you're supposed to be in this understanding. Because I know the world pulling at you, your family pulling at you, your girl pulling at you, your mama pulling at you, everybody trying to say you're in a cult, you're crazy. No, no, no. You was predestinated to believe what you believe right now. And Christ went before us to prepare a place for us. This ain't talking about no Christian that eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster and blaspheme the word of God. That ain't no way. Ain't no way it's talking about them. It's talking about us who, even though they get mad at us, they throw, they throw our names out as mud, in the mud. They uh, lie on us, slander on us. You understand? Try to come against us. Put false reports in the media about us. People want to harm us when we go to their neighborhood and teach the word of God. This ain't talking about them people that sit up in the church every Sunday and don't face no persecution. It's talking about us. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. You got to believe that. If you don't believe that, you will not enter this heavenly place. You won't. The Lord is looking for faithful men, faithful women that believe. If your faith is so shaken by somebody talking bad about you or a family member not wanting to be around you, you ain't built for this. You got to be willing to die for Christ. You understand? Christians won't even stop eating pork. How the hell are they going to die for Jesus? All right? Read again, verse 2. Verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. Go ahead. If it were not so, uh -huh. I would have told you. He said, if it wasn't so, I told you that. If it wasn't true, go ahead. I go to prepare a place for you. Go ahead. And if I go and prepare a place for you, uh -huh. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Hey, so I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring you where I'm at. Go ahead. That where I am, there you may be also. So you can come to the realm that I'm in. That's some heavy stuff right there. Go ahead. And whither I go, ye know. 
and the way ye know. What are you talking about? What does he mean you know? How did the disciples know? They was born, what, Peter and them was 30 years old, 35 years old? How they know where Christ came from? How they know where Christ was going? He said, and whether I go, you know. And the way you know. You know how to get there too. That's heavy. That is heavy. Go to 2nd Edges chapter 14. Read verse 9. 2nd Edges in the Apocrypha. Chapter 14. Verse 9. The book of 2nd Edges chapter 14 and verse 9. For thou shalt be taken away from all. He's talking to Edris. He's saying, Edris, you're going to die. Go ahead. And from henceforth, thou shalt remain with my son. He said, Ezra, you're going to die. And you're going to be with my son. You understand? What is God talking about? That's why he was telling the disciples, you know where I'm going. And the way you know. You just don't remember. But it'll come back to your remembrance soon. This is some heavy stuff right here we're reading. This is what the, 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 the pastor can't do this. He can't go in the scriptures and go to the precepts and show you to understand it. Go ahead. For thou shalt be taken away from all, and from henceforth thou shalt remain with my son, Read. and with such as be like thee. So there are other people with Christ right now, too, in paradise. Go ahead. Until the times be ended. Until the times be ended. I want you to go from there. Go to John 17, 24. The book of John, chapter 17, and verse 24. Go ahead. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, mm. that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So, wait a minute now. See, it's about to get heavy up in here. Christ said, greeting again. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me. Those are the disciples. Those are us. The apostles, go ahead. Be with me where I am. So they got to come where I'm at. Go ahead. That they may behold my glory. So they can see me as I truly am in my glory. Go ahead. Which thou hast given me. Go ahead. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. And thou hast loved me before the foundation of the world. Christ was here before the <laughs> Lord created the earth. Before the earth was created, Christ was already with the Father. What is he telling you about us? Those of us that endure to the end, those of us that die for this truth, those of us that keep the commandments all the way into the end until Christ's return or until you die, he's telling you, you're going to be with Christ again because you was already with Christ before. You just, your understanding don't know that. Go to Ecclesiastes 1 verse uh, 11. Excuse me. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. So he's telling you, he's talking about man. There is no remembrance of former things. Meaning, you don't know who you were before this life. But you were here before this life. You don't know who, what assignment God gave you in the heavens. You understand? We don't know. All we know is, one day we was watching YouTube and a video came up. One day we was walking down the street and we seen brothers on the corner saying they're Israelites. One day we was in the barbershop and somebody gave us a flyer. One day we heard Kendra Lamar say, I'm an Israelite, don't call me black no more. We're like, okay, who is an Israelite? Let me look this up. Oh, wow, IUIC, what is this? Let me go on their website. You understand what I'm saying? That's all you know. All, that's all you know. You don't know how it happened. All you know is it just happened. Right? Go to John chapter 3, verse 8. eight. John chapter 3 and verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou he hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. That's why your family think you're crazy. Because they like, what, what, what are you just all of a sudden? We've been in church. I mean, my, my auntie said this. She said, why don't you just go back to what you know? I can't go back if it be the Lord's will. Never. You understand? Because... The scriptures say the spirit blow it, the wind blow it where it listeth. The spirit of God, it just blow and it just catch people. And you're like, I remember there's a sister in the congregation right now. I knew her in the world before I came in the truth. 
and she used to buck against me on, on, on Facebook. I used to post stuff on Facebook, and she used to literally buck against me being my comments. I could show you comments, 130, 200 comments, and we going back and forth. Nine years ago, 10 years ago, now she's in the congregation. Married to a brother in the truth. Got kids. You understand that? But you don't know where it come from. All you do is put it out there, and the next thing you know, you see people coming in. That's what that means. The Lord just wake people up. All right? So that's why the, uh, that Christ said that about the apostles. Like, they need to be where I'm at. You understand? I pray for them that they'll one day be where I am. That's sitting in spiritual places, in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That's what it's talking about. Go, to, um, go back to John 14. We didn't finish. I went to Edris and then John 17. John 14, read um, 7. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 7. If ye had known me. Start at 6, I'm sorry. Verse 6, yes, sir. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's how we get to Christ. That's how we get to the Lord, by through Christ. Go ahead. If ye had known me, ye should have known, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him. And have seen he him. He said, from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Why? Because we see the Father through Christ. Because they look exactly alike. They're identical. Christ and God look exactly alike. He is a spitting image. The Bible says he is a express image. He looks just like his daddy. Just like some of y'all look just like yours. Matthew 19, 26. I know I told you I won't get, get done with this. Matthew 19, 26. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. Go ahead. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Go ahead. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? He said, What shall we have therefore? We done forsaken all to follow you, Lord. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. Ye when, that have followed me in the regeneration. Go ahead. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, mm -hmm. ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You hear that? He told the disciples, when the, when the, in the regeneration, you're going to sit on thrones with me. That's that. Sit, go back to Ephesians 1 and 3 again. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, uh -huh. according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. But notice he has said he had made us sit in spiritual places, right, or in heavenly places, spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Then he said he, he had chosen us before the foundation of the world. Read Ephesians 2 and 6. Go to the next chapter. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, it said the same thing there. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. And his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. See that that in the ages to come, it's going to be known you've been with Christ this whole time. You the believers from the beginning. That's why I say you belong here. You was predestinated for this greatness. To be a part of this movement is greatness. And you may not be able to see it quite yet. I don't know about you, but when I see the men marching in the streets, when I hear the classes, when I see what we're doing in the music industry, when I see what we're doing on social media, the schools that we're opening up, I see greatness. Man, we small right now. We ain't even as big as the Lord's going to make us. That's the scary thing. I'd be afraid if I was an Edomite. Pure fear. Go from there. Go to um, read 1 and 3 again, 3 and 4 together. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Go ahead. According as he hath chosen us. In him before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So watch this. Go to Second Edris, chapter 9, verse 7. Second Edris, chapter 9, verse 7. Go ahead. And every one that shall be saved 
and shall be able to escape mm -hmm. by his works. By his works. And by faith, mm. whereby ye have believed. Go ahead. Shall be preserved from the said perils. You're going to be preserved from the said perils, the dangerous times in the last day. Go ahead. And shall see my salvation in my land. And you're going to see God's salvation in his land. Go ahead. And within my borders. Uh-huh. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. You hear that? The Bible says he has sanctified in us in him from the beginning. When he's talking about the beginning, he's talking about in heavenly places. From the beginning, it was already predestinated that you was going to be where you are today. Now it's up to you to show through your faith and your works that you was chosen. Because many are called. It's going to be a lot of people come through these doors. A lot of people. And a lot of people going to leave. But the ones that stick through year after year, over and over, every feast day, every Sabbath, every new moon, they always here, always putting in the word, rising up the ranks, always willing to work for the Lord. Them the ones you say, hmm, that one might be chosen. Look how diligent they are. You just got to stay diligent. That's why Bishop said he ain't always motivated, but he's always disciplined. Why? Because that discipline is going to show this is where you're supposed to be. you predestinated to be here for this greatness. You understand? Now, skip down from there to verse 18 for me. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 18. And now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, mm. no man spake against me. Wait a minute. Hold up. How man going to speak against God if they weren't created yet? If it said before the, wait, hold on, wait a minute. And now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, meaning it was still in planning. It says, even for them to dwell in that now live, the people that actually live on the earth, no man spake against me. How could man speak against God if the world wasn't made yet? What are you talking about? What is he saying? Let's see. Go ahead. For then everyone obeyed. So before the earth was created, everyone obeyed? How? <laughs> How could you obey if you weren't created? Hmm. Go ahead. But now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed. Mm -hmm. And by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. So the reason it says for then everyone obeyed before the earth was made is because your spirit was already with God in the heavens. That's why I went over that class, the captivity of the flesh. We captive in this thing. Our spirit was here before we ever had a flesh on earth. The earth wasn't created. So you couldn't have a fleshly body. You had an angelic spiritual body. You know what I want? 1 Corinthians 15. Before you ever came to this earth, brothers and sisters, you were here in the spirit. And the Lord sent your spirit into a body, and now you live and dwell in that body in your name, Tyrone or John John or I don't know, Lisa. I don't know. You understand? But before that spirit was assigned to that body, you was already here. Your spirit was already living. Okay? In the heavens with God. Read that for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 39. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All flesh is not the same flesh. Go ahead. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, mm -hmm. another of fishes, and another of birds. Go ahead. There are also celestial bodies. So there are celestial bodies. A celestial body is a body that's from the heavens. That's what it means. Celestial means from heaven. Go ahead. And bodies terrestrial. And then terrestrial is of the earth. That's why I remember E.T., extra terrestrial. Because he didn't have an angelic body that couldn't die. I mean, he had a big old funny looking head, big old eyes. He get knocked upside the head. You know what I'm saying? He riding a bike and stuff. So he, he had a, a terrestrial body. But you had like throughout the scriptures, you'll see times where angels would come down to the earth with celestial bodies. They couldn't die. That's what that means. Okay? Go ahead. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Read. But the glory of the celestial is one. So the glory of the celestial body is one. Go ahead. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. Two different types of bodies. Okay? That's what that means when it says we was with the Lord before we came to this earth. We was already with him. Before the foundations of the earth was laid. Okay? Um, go back to Ephesians 1 and 4. Ephesians. Keep going black on me. Go ahead. Chapter 1 and verse 4. 
according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Go ahead. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So the Lord had already chosen us in the beginning. In the heavens, the Lord already chose us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. The Lord had already told us to believe on his son. That's why when you heard the law about not eating pork, you just did it. You realize you had to put down the weed, you just put it down. Some of some stuff you may be still struggling with, but for the most part, when you heard these things, you're like, man, it's too much truth to this. You understand? Some of our people hear, hear us bring them scriptures out, and they, they mind already turning, what about this scripture? What about Acts 10? What about this? When those scriptures have nothing to do with you eating pork. But in their mind, they already have it fixated because they are not of us. We're not the same. They're not of us. You understand? It said that he had already, according to he have chosen us in before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. What do it mean without blame? Philippians 3 and 5. What does it mean without blame? 3 and 6, excuse me. Yes, sir. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 6. Watch this. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Talking about Paul. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. You hear that? Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. The Lord had already predestinated us or chosen us to work on ourselves to become blameless. We literally trying to become blameless. Our people in the world are not thinking about that. They using Christ as a crutch, saying, "Well, y'all fall short of the glory." You will say, "Hey, why you sleeping with that man's wife? Y'all fall short of the glory of God." What? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, I was in the barber shop. I want to say that was 2013, 14. I had just stumbled upon the truth, and I was trying to teach the brothers in the barbershop. And this dude that used to cut my hair from the time when I was a kid, he was like, hey, man. He was like, yeah, I ain't going to lie. You know, so some of the stuff you're saying is right. And he's like, yeah, I didn't, you, know, I, you know, I done stepped out on my wife a few times and everything. He was like, but God know my heart. We all fall short of the glory of God. You understand that? Do you understand the mindset? What was he saying? Yeah, I be doing some evil all the time. I'm an evil nigga. But. God know my heart. We all fall short. That's a crutch, man. That is an excuse just to continue doing what you've been doing and not have to change. Go back. Ephesians 1 and 5 now. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So it said, having predestinated us. Unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestinated. We see that word throughout the Bible a few times. Go to Romans 8, 29. We see that word a few times in Scripture. Predestinated. Let's see. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, mm. he also did Predestinate. When it say he foreknew you, mean he knew you before the foundation of the world. Go ahead. To be conformed to the image of his son. And he knew before the foundation of the world that you was going to come down here. You was going to be born of your father, born of your mother. You was going to grow up in Jackson, Mississippi. You was going to grow up in Trinidad, Grenada, Jamaica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Sierra Leone, wherever you are. He knew that you was going to be born into that family. And that you was going to go through some trial tribulations. You was going to have a wicked lifestyle growing up. And then one day he was going to wake you up to understand the truth. And you was going to start keeping the commandments from that point on. And start conforming yourself to the image of his son. That's what that's saying. The Lord already knew what he was going to do. Go ahead. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Go ahead. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. Them he also called. Go ahead. And whom he called, them he also justified. Mm. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Go from there. Go to Jeremiah 1 and 5. Let's see an example of this. We read this all the time, right? But let's go to an example. Jeremiah chapter 1, and I want you to read verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Mm. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Uh -huh. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. It said, before I, knew, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. 
and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. We were talking about that the other night about how all the sperm cells that is in a man, that is with a man from his childhood up, he has sex with his wife, brings forth a seed, and there's millions of those sperm cells all rushing to get to the same place. But yours was the one that made it through. Because only one can make it, right? Sometimes if it's twins, maybe two. And even though the twins, only one of y'all might be chosen. <laughs> you and your twin sister come into the world and she don't believe. You and your brother come into the world, you come into the world as a triplet. And the other two don't believe, it's just you. And you can't, you don't understand it. I'm telling you, this thing heavy. God chose who God chose. Be happy that you're here. To hell with them if they don't want to keep the commandments. I love you. I really do, Ma. But if you don't believe the Bible, it is what it is. If you don't believe the Bible, Dad, I love you. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You got to do what you got to do. God used you to bring me into this earth. But I know he called me to be predestinated unto this. And I'm going to follow through with it. And I'm going to fight to follow through with it. And that's the way it got to be. You got to fight. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Go to uh, Isaiah 49. Because remember, I'm going to show you something heavy too in Second Edges in a minute. Go to Isaiah 49, verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 49, and verse 1. Go ahead. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. Go ahead. The Lord hath called me from the womb. Mm. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. Wait a minute. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from his womb, from the womb. From the bowels of my mother have he made mention of my name. That's some heavy stuff right there. Go ahead. And he had made my mouth like a sharp sword. Mm. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. So the, a quiver, remember, a quiver is where you hold arrows. You ever see uh, Robin Hood or... Peter Pan or whomever, Zelda. Remember Zelda back in the day? Nintendo 64? Little Edomite, Leprechaun, whatever he was, with blonde hair. And on his back, he had that quiver. And he pulled out the quiver, he would pull his arrow and put it in his boat and shoot it. That's what God sent us for. That's why the Bible said we God's battle axe. We are God's weaponry. The Lord sent us back like an arrow. He pulled us out of his quiver and he shot us, fly, into our mother's womb from our father. <laughs> Shada said, okay, you're going to be a prophet. I don't care what you are, basketball player, football player, rapper, entertainer, whatever. Christian church, you probably sang in the choir, used to play the piano. Lord said, uh-uh, uh-uh. That was for a time. Now, I'm going to wake you up and call you back to what you're truly supposed to be doing. And shoot you like a bow and arrow. Use you as a weapon on this earth to cast down imaginations. Go ahead. Verse, verse 3. And said unto me. Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Go ahead. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I labored in vain, Lord. I spent my strength for not. I did all this work for nothing. And in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. But the Lord remember my works. Go ahead. Watch this. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant. See that? To be his servant. Go ahead. To bring Jacob again to him. Mm. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. I want you to think about something, because when I read verse 6, some of y'all are going to fall off the cliff. In verse 5, Isaiah is telling you God, only mission for him was for him to bring Jacob back to him, even though at that time Israel were not gathered. What was going on during the time of Isaiah? The northern kingdom had gone off and had been taken into captivity to Assyria. And many of the Jews, the southern kingdom, was still in the land. Now he's telling you right here, Israel at that time was not gathered. But the Lord sent him to gather them. Go ahead. Verse 6. And he said, 
It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. The preserved of Israel. Go ahead. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So somebody read that and they fall off the horse. They say, see, it's a Gentile. Why does it have to mention Gentile? Because at that time, Israel was not gathered. That's why he says, to restore the preserved of Israel, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Speaking about future, when Israel would go off into Gentile customs and start to think that they were Gentile. Just like all of us sitting up in here. We all thought we was African American. Some of y'all thought y'all was West Indian, Jamaican, which is a land of wood and water. Does that make sense? You a whole human being, but you thought you was the land of wood and water? That makes no sense. Trinidadian, Tobago, come on. No. Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone mean mountain lion. You ain't no damn mountain lion. That don't make no sense. Ghana mean warrior king. And that was, it was given that name by a man named um, uh, Kwame Nkrumah. Before that, they called it the Gold Coast. The white man came there and said, man, these niggas got all kind of gold. Let's call this the Gold Coast. And the Portuguese came and oppressed us. Followed by the Dutch, the French, and then the British, and Almino Casa. And they brought us, Almino Casa, and they brought us over here to the Americas as slaves. So when they got there, they said, this, I don't care what y'all name was before, we calling y'all the Gold Coast. Then Kwame Nkrumah said, no, we're going to be called Warrior King. But you even though we are warriors and we are kings, that ain't our name. We're the Israelites. Okay? So you're not Ghanaian. Ashanti, those are the children of Ashan, the people of the smoke. So he knew we would start calling ourselves these things. There's an Edomite woman that named Nigeria that. And Nigeria, it's just like Niger, which is nigger, Nigeria just means land of blacks. Same thing with Ethiopia. It means burnt face. You understand that? That's what, same thing with um, uh, El Sudan. You understand? It just means the land of dark-skinned people. That's what it means. But that ain't our name. What's it? Um, don't get me started. You know how I go. I start going into African history. All right. Uh, go back. So Jeremiah was chosen. Go to uh, 2nd Edges 2 and 18. Jeremiah was chosen. Isaiah was chosen. Before they were in their mother's womb, the Lord had already ordained them prophets to gather Israel. 2nd Edges chapter 2, verse 18. The book of 2nd Edges chapter 2 and verse 18. Go ahead. For thy help will I send my servants, Essay and Jeremy. So Essay or Essay is uh, Isaiah. This is Greek. Jeremy is Jeremiah. Go ahead. After whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. And those 12 trees are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. But notice he says, for thy help will I send my servants, Esau and Jeremiah. So Isaiah and Jeremiah just rotate. Came in the earth during their time. Both of them wrote, they called the major prophets. You know why? Because they book big. It ain't like Habakkuk with three chapters. Or like Zephaniah, three chapters. Notice Isaiah and Jeremiah are very big books. You know why? Because they were major prophets. And Isaiah and Jeremiah come back on the earth throughout the process of time and wake up Israel again. They here today, waking up Israel. We don't know who they are, but that's what their job is. That may be some of y'all watching. That may be some of the brothers in this congregation. One of y'all may be Jeremiah. One of you may be Isaiah in the spirit. Went through your rough times, and the Lord brought you in here. Predestinated. Go back to Ephesians 1 and 5. Ephesians 1 verse uh, 5. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, Go ahead. According to the good pleasure of his will. To go into the good pleasure of his will. Go ahead. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So the reason we accept it is through the grace that came to us. But it said it was the good pleasure of God's will to bring us to the adoption of sons. Now, who is the adoption for? Because somebody will, I'm telling you, people read, read in Paul's letters and they're confused. Go to, you know what I want, Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who is the adoption, uh, the adoption for? Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption. So who pertaineth the adoption? And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenants. And the giving of the law. Uh -huh. And the service of God. 
and the promises. The Israelites is who the adoption for. But all Israel don't believe. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Neither because they are the seed start, start of... Start at 6. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Verse 6. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, but they are not all Israel which are of Israel. So not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. There are Israelites that do not believe this. They weren't uh, chosen to believe this. We were. We was the one predestinated to believe this. Everybody not going to believe it. I'm telling you. Even though you showed them without a shadow of a doubt that this is, this is the truth, they will not believe it. Romans 8, 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. But ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Come on. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The spirit itself bear witness with, with, witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's why you heard this and you believed it. Because the spirit, remember we read earlier, the, the wind bloweth where it listeth. So, so are they that are born of the spirit. But that what you're reading right here. Same thing. You heard the word of God and you were like, yo, that make too much sense. That I'm, I know, all right, I hear you. But what about these slave ships? What about Job 30 and 30, my skin black upon me? What about Deuteronomy 28, cotton fields and slavery and all that? How else you explain that? They can't explain it. They got to try to explain it away. Oh, well, that was talking about that. Nah. Stop. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's how we woke up, through the adoption. Christ called us back. Now we remember who we are. Okay? Galatians 4 and 4. The book of Galatians, chapter 4. In verse 4. Come on. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Meaning Christ, go ahead. To redeem them that were under the law, mm. that we might receive the adoption of sons. Who was under the law? The 12 tribes of the children of Israel. The Israelites was under the law. So the adoption for the Israelites. And your spirit bear witness that we are the children of God. That's what he's telling you. You understand that? Can read? And because ye are sons, God have sent forth the spirit of his son mm. into your hearts, read. crying, Abba, Father. That's the same thing we read in Romans 8. Romans 8 said the same thing. I'm telling you, Paul was on another level. You, you think you finna smoke weed and understand Paul? Stop playing. You defiling your temple, but you gonna understand Paul. You still smashing old girl. And you gonna understand Paul? No, you gonna stumble. You have a little bit of understanding, but if you don't stop sinning, if you don't stop doing that willful sin, you're never going to understand God's word. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Go ahead. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Breathe. The forgiveness of sins mm -hmm. according to the riches of his grace. So we got the redemption through his blood. All right, I want you to go to Romans 3.23. The book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, mm -hmm. being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So because Christ came and died, although we all have sinned and fallen short, meaning we all done broke God's commandments at one point in our life, we now have through redemption through Christ's blood. That's why we always read Revelation 12 and 11 to show you where it says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. You got to believe on the son of God in order to be uh, delivered. We've never not said that. They always say, well, they don't believe in Christ. And to, to them, Christ is just uh, a person that looks like them. What are you talking about? Because we show the image of Christ don't mean that's the only thing that we believe regarding him. We believe that he died for us and that through his blood we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sins. We ain't, it ain't all of ourselves. It's also through his grace. It's foolish for somebody to try to spew out rhetoric to say that we don't believe that. You're not paying attention. Luke 168.
The book of Luke, chapter 1, and verse 68. Uh -huh. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So he said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he have visited and redeemed his people. Mm -hmm. And have raised up and horn of salvation for us Breathe. in the house of his servant David. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So it says, for he have visited and redeemed his people and have raised up and horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake in the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Since the world began, he's been talking about how the Lord was going to send his son to redeem Israel, man. And that's what we've been reading the whole day. This ain't nothing new. This been going on. This Israelite movement, this is not new. This ain't new. It's only new to you because you don't understand Scripture. But when you read the Bible, you realize God already said he was going to raise up his sons and daughters in these last days, and they was going to hear his voice and follow him. Christian church done done us a disservice, man. We don't know nothing about the Bible. Read the same Scriptures over and over. Galatians 3.28. Uh, John 3.16, we read the same scripture over and over. It's exhausting. No, show me what the Bible really talking about. Read 71 again. Verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies mm. and from the hand of all that hate us. We will be saved from our enemies. Christ going to save us from our enemies and for everybody that hate us. Go ahead. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers uh -huh. and to remember his holy covenant. And to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, uh -huh. that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Because right now you fear to serve God. When you go to your job, you tuck your friends in because they don't want you altering the, 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 the uniform. Oh, you can't put that on your uniform. Some of you sisters, you can't wear your hair wrap at work. They no, no, you can't do that. Well, what is your religion? What does it matter? I'm having a bad headache. Let me... They won't do it. They, they always got a problem with us. So we can't serve God. Oh, I need the feast day off. Man, you just took the same day. Every, every month you're going to take a day off? Yes, because every month I have a, a, a holy day that I want to keep. What's your religion? Find out your religion? Fire you. We can't serve God without fear. Go ahead. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Go ahead. And thou, child shall be called the prophet of the highest. Go ahead. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. That's John the Baptist. This is why he was in his mother's womb. Go ahead. Or to no, after he, after he was born, his father was able to speak and said, we're going to call his name John. So, so now his father, Zacharias, is prophesying about how great his son was going to be. Go ahead. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people mm. by the remission of their sins. So why would he say that? Go back, go back to the first part of the chapter. And I want you to read verse um, 13. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. Read. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. But and he John translates to Yohan, right? Like you got Yohanathan, that's Jonathan. You understand? Yon or Yohan is John. So that's what the angel's telling him. Call your son Yon or Yohan, which is Jonathan or John. Go ahead. But he, have, but he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He's going to be great in the sight of the Lord. Now, how are you going to tell him this before he's born? He said in verse, in verse 13, it said, And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. John wasn't born yet. Go ahead. And I shall have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Go ahead. But he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Even from his mother's womb. Even from his mother's womb, he's going to be a prophet. So wait a minute now. Jeremiah was ordained to be a prophet. Isaiah was ordained to be a prophet before they was born. And so did John, was John the Baptist. So we read all these men. And you think, it ain't, you think you're not in that number? You think yourself, you think so insignificant of yourself, you don't think you was called to do the same? Why are you here? I can't stand it when a brother don't want to do no work for the Lord, when he just want to sit here. No Learn this, apply this to your life, and go out and teach God's people. You understand? That's what the Bible is commanding us to do. Go ahead. Yep. 
verse 16. 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. That's your mission. To turn. That's the same that we read about Isaiah. Same thing in Jeremiah. Go ahead. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just mm. to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. You see that? That was John's mission. While he was in the heavens, the Lord gave him the mission. He came down to the earth and applied what was need to be applied so that he can do the mission. That's some heavy stuff. I, that, make, that make me joyful when I read stuff like this because I know I ain't in this truth for nothing. Because some of you are very excited. You're new in the truth and you're very excited. But when you get to year five, six, seven, you start having that little uh, battle fatigue that the bishop was talking about. You start having that battle fatigue, like, I don't know, you know. You start relaxing a little bit. You can't relax. You got to keep your foot on the gas. Bro, I almost said, you know, I'm just, I ain't going to teach today. No, I'm in Jackson today. I'm teaching. It's Thursday. They used to, they used to be teaching the class. I'm here this week. I'm teaching. Yeah, but I, at first I was like, I told my real, I said, I'm tired. I'm real tired. I'm going to just rest. Hell no. The hell with that. We're going to teach this word to kingdom come. You understand? Go to, um, go back. No, go to Revelation 5 verse 9. I'll probably get to verse 10, y'all. <laughs> Maybe. Revelation 5 and 9. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God mm -hmm. by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Now, have we been reading redemption for Israel lost? So now we get here and a Christian fall off the horse. See? It's a nation, kindred, and tongue. It's a out of every nation and kindred and tongue. Meaning the Israelites were scattered in all those nations. Because redemption only for Israel. The adoption of the son is only for Israel. Predestination is the Israelites. Saints are the Israelites. <laughs> Christians are the Israelites. Come on, man. Read it. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. Yep. And to open the seals thereof. Go ahead. But thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Redemption is for Israel. Okay? It, the Lord sent his son to die for Israel to redeem us unto him. Go back to Ephesians 1 verse 8. Read 7 and 8 together so we can keep the thought going. Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 7, excuse me, verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, yep. the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. And he hath made known unto us the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure, mm -hmm. which he had purposed in himself. So it says, and having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews. What I want first. No, Psalms 40 and 6. What is the will of God? The book of Psalms, chapter 40, in verse 6. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mm -hmm. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Mm -hmm. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Is David talking about himself? Is the Bible written about David? No. That's why he mentioned burnt offerings and sacrifices first. That ain't David talking about himself. That's the spirit of Christ speaking through David. I'm going to show you that in a minute because somebody going to say that's crazy. I'm going to show you. Go ahead. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Could you give me that in 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel? I think it's 23. You know we always read, the Lord spake by me. 2 Samuel 23 and verse 2. 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 1. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who, has, who was raised up on high 
the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, Read. The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. That Lord is talking about Christ. I know sometimes you see an uppercase and you be like, oh, that's got to be talking about the Most High. Not in this instance. Because we read in Psalms chapter 40, verse 7, then said, I lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. We know David ain't talking about himself. So when you saw that capitalization right there, you automatically say, that's talking about the most high. And just because it's capitalized don't mean it's talking about the most high. It's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So Christ spake through David. So now Christ said in Psalms 40, verse 7, then said, I lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. What was God's law regarding Christ? That he was going to have to take away animal sacrifice for the remission of sins. That's why he said, I delight to do thy will. That's the will of God. That Christ came to take away sacrifice so that all 12 tribes can have a chance at redemption through his blood. Go to Hebrews 10, verse 5. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Read. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Read. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Read. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had its pleasure therein which are offered by the law. You see that? I'm telling you, once again, Paul going precept upon precept, because we just read that in Psalms. But it was speaking about Christ. That's the will of God, that he would send his son to die for us when we was dead in trespasses and in sins to give us an opportunity to repent and to believe on him. You understand? So I'm telling you, you got to read the word of God precept upon precept to understand. Colossians 1.25. This is the mystery of God's will that our people don't understand, and they're still struggling with. Read that for me. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. Yes, sir. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, uh -huh. to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Now is made manifest to the Israelites. Go ahead. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So in Christ, the Gentiles can also come into the fold. And you would say, well, that must be talking about other nations. That's impossible. Because if it was talking about other nations, then who was the predestinated? Who was those that sit in heavenly places? Who was the adoption? Who got the glory for? Who was the giving of the law for? Who was the promises and the covenants for? We read earlier, that's all Israel. But it's been a mystery on this earth the whole time. People have been reading this Bible, and when they see Gentile, they say, man, that's talking about all races. But we understand that ain't talking about all races. You understand that? We understand that's talking about the 12 tribes coming together through the death of Christ. We've been reading it all day to set up this whole thing. That is the mystery. Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. What do you mean carried away? Carried away into slavery. And you were taught idols. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. This is why he said you were Gentiles. Deuteronomy 28, 37. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. Come on. And thou shalt become an astonishment, mm -hmm. a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. That's carried away. And amongst those nations, we become bywords, meaning they will call us names outside of the nation of Israel. They will call us African American. They will call us Hispanics. They will call us Native Indian, Seminole Indian, Puerto Rican, Portuguese. That we ain't Portuguese. Afro-Portuguese, Afro-Iranian, Afro-Iraqi. Come on. That makes no sense. We're the children of Israel scattered amongst these nations, being called by different names, even unto those dumb idols as you were led. Deuteronomy 28, 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. 
And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So he said, and when you got to these nations, once you were scattered, you would serve other gods. Why was we serving other gods? They forced us to. They made us reverence their God. Every captivity we was in. Watch this. I'm going to show you an example. Daniel chapter 3. It's all through Scripture. But I'm going to show you something. And this is why Babylon failed. Because Babylon was trying to make everybody serve their gods. Book of uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse um, 17, 16. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't their names. Their name was Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. Daniel's name was Daniel, but they changed his name to Bel Belteshazzar. You understand? But that wasn't his name. They named him after Baal. That's the god of the Babylonians. They named Daniel after they god. But that was not his name. His name was Daniel of the tribe of Judah from the descendants of Zedekiah. But they changed that. Just like they gave us the names that we have today. The cap we always went through captivity and did that. But guess what? That's a mystery to the world. To us, it's clear. Oh, okay, I get it. Deuteronomy 28, that's why, it's, that's why it happens that way. But to the world, they're like, no, the mystery of the Gentiles is that all people can be saved. No, that's not the mystery. How is that a mystery? How is that a mystery? Come on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Nebuchadnezzar set up a golden image, and any time that his uh, servants would play music, you had to bow down to that image. It's no difference from every time you hear that, dun, 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 dun. you got to stand up, put your hand over your heart, and face the damn flag. It's the same thing. It's the same exact thing, the national anthem. How do we know? What happened to your, uh, to your boy, uh, Chris Jackson, who changed his name to Mahmoud Abdul Raouf? He from Gulfport, Mississippi, one of the best basketball players to ever come through here. He converted to Muslim. He played with the Denver Nuggets. They, had, they said, stand for the national flag. He said, no. He turned his back and prayed. Now, he was following Islam, which we don't believe in, but he was not willing to serve America's God. And they didn't like that. Same thing Nebuchadnezzar. But notice our forefathers said, we ain't doing that. But you think they was the only one? You think they was the one? You, you think that was common that all Israelites said they weren't doing that? No, a lot of Israelites bowed down and they served that flag. They served that God. That's why he said, even though those dumb idols, as you were led, they made us serve their idols when we went into captivity. You understand? But that's a mystery to the world. Now we understand it in these last days. We can go precept upon precept. That's why he said, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Read verse 9 again. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Go ahead. According to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself Go ahead. that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So let me show you something. Go to the book of uh, Philippians 2, read verse 9. It says you're going to gather all things in Christ, right? Everything that's in heaven and that's in earth. That's some heavy stuff. Read that for me. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. Wherefore, God also hath, he, hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Go ahead. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And it, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I, what I want you to pay attention to, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow. The demon's going to bow. Satan going to bow. Every angel going to bow. Everybody going to bow to Christ. You know why? Because the Lord set Christ up to be the ruler over every realm except the third heaven. The third heaven is God's. Everything else, the Lord said, here, that's yours. That's why the scripture said, Jesus, I know. 
Paul I know, but who are you? The demons know Christ. They were afraid of him when he came on the scene. Why would they be afraid of him? Why would they be afraid of Jesus? I mean, he ain't nobody. Psst. All right. They knew who he was when he came on the scene. In the last days, when the Lord sent his son again the second time, he going to put all authority down under his feet, and everybody going to bow down to him. You might as well get on his side now. You understand? Because it's going. when I say get on his side, I mean you Israelites. Because other nations, they can do what they want. We don't teach them to break the commandments, but we ain't holding class for them either. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10 again. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So watch this. Go to the book of um, oh, that, Luke 24, 21. I mean 21, 24. Because it said, in the dispensation of the fullness of times. The book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, uh -huh. until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So the Bible says that Jerusalem is going to be trodden down of Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What the hell is these Christians reading? The people of God are not in the land, brothers and sisters. We are still in the times of the Gentiles. Unless Christ walking around here, well, we don't know about it, which the Bible says every knee going to bow when he do get here. Everybody ain't bowing to Christ. You got Muslims. You got the Christian church. You got Egyptologists, atheists, transgenders running around here. So what do you mean every knee going to bow? Every knee ain't bowed just so Christ ain't here. So we still in the times of the Gentile right now. The fullness of time is not over yet. The fullness of time going to be over when Christ is reigning. Okay? That's when every knee going to bow. Now, give me that um, Daniel 7, 26. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, and verse 26. But the judgment shall sit. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Read. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. You think all dominions talking about Russia and Afghanistan only? No. That's all that are in heaven and that are in the earth. Them different realms that you can't see. Like you read about a, a, a demon called Asmodeus who was bound in Egypt. He going to bow to Christ. That's what it's telling you. All of the spirits, everybody going to bow to the Son of God. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. And we was predestinated to understand this and prepare ourselves to be blameless before his return. So that we can get the kingdom and rule with him. 1 Corinthians 15, 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 24. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power. Go ahead. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. Read. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. He going to throw death in the lake of fire too. Ain't going to be no more death. Immortality for us. Go ahead. But he hath put all things under his feet. Go ahead. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Go ahead. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So Christ has to subdue everything and put it under his authority. Once he has subdued everything, once every knee has bowed and confessed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he is King of kings, Lord of lords, then he's going to give the kingdom to his Father. He's going to go and prepare everything for God. God ain't got to do nothing. All he got to do is show up. He's been there at the word. He snapped his finger as it come to pass. Then Christ going to say, here you go, Lord. That's how it got to be. That the Father may be all in all. So you will know who God is. You better be on his side in that day, I'm telling you. Go back to Ephesians 1. I cut it off at um, 11 and 12. Damn, no, I'm, I'm going to get through it. Go ahead. 
Ephesians chapter 1, you want verse 11 now? Yes, sir. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So we are predestinated. Go ahead. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. See, you trust in Christ. Your family don't. Read. In whom ye also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth. You trusted as soon as you heard it. You knew, like, this is right. Go ahead. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. See that you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Go to chapter uh, 4, verse 30. Same book. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath. So read that again, verse 30. Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. We are sealed unto the day of redemption with that Holy Spirit of God, that Holy Spirit of promise. Because we believe in the promises, we keep on fighting. We keep on pushing unto the end. Never give up, never give in. Go to 2 Timothy 1 and 9, or 2 Timothy 2, 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Go ahead. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord know them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You hear that? That's why we fighting so, they hate us because we teach the law. But it's because we're trying to depart from iniquity. Because we understand by reading the Bible, we can't get in if we don't keep the law. They fighting against it because they're not sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. They're not. And it is what it is. Go back to uh, Ephesians 1, 14. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 14. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. The purchased possession is Acts 20, 28. Could you read it? While it, which is earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. What's the purchased possession? The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. Go ahead. To feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. You see that? The purchased possession is the Israelites. Come on, man. How many times we got to go? How many times is he going to tell you that? And he talking to the leaders of Ephesus, by the way. Skip up to verse 17. Verse 17. And from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And called the elders of the church. Skip back down to verse 28. Verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. You and, elders of the church in Ephesus. Go ahead. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. So that's what it means in chapter 1, verse 14 of Ephesians, where it said, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory, until the Israelites, are the, the purchased possession of the Israelites are, have received their inheritance. We have to continue to keep the commandments because we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We got to keep going to the end. You go ahead. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14 which is in the earnest of our inheritance, which is the earnest of our inheritance, inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Go ahead. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and, your, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So we pray for all the brothers and sisters scattered abroad, keeping his commandments. Go ahead. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of him. Go ahead. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, mm. that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So in verse 17 and 18 is heavy. It says, the eyes, excuse me, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Everybody don't understand this Bible, y'all. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Go back to verse 9. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. God made known unto us the mystery of his will. Go ahead. According to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. So it said the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. 
Watch this. Go to Matthew chapter uh, 13. I'm going to close it out probably right here. I'm going to read these few precepts because I know y'all think that because somebody read the Bible, that means that they understand it. The Bible is the only book on the planet Earth that you have to do what it says to understand it. You can read this Bible up and down, front and back. You can do all the different uh, uh, proof texting and eisegesis, hermeneutics, go to all the colleges, get all the PhDs in theology, and you will never understand this book because this is not a carnal book. This is not a book that you just read and you just understand. No, 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 no. This is a spiritual book. And in this book are mysteries, and those mysteries are not given to everyone. Give me that real quick. Matthew, 9, Matthew 13, verse 9. Matthew 13, verse 9. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Meaning understand it. Go ahead. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Everybody don't know the mysteries in this Bible. It's only given to an elect people. Who are those elect people? Those are the ones that were predestinated. That's why I say you was predestinated for greatness. You belong here. That's why you understand the Bible. And everybody else is trying to figure out what the hell going on. You understand it, though. Read it again. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But to them it is not given. Go ahead. For whos whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Go ahead. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. Mm -hmm. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. That's your mama. <laughs> that's your pastor. That's your co-workers. That's your friends you grew up with who you're trying to tell about the truth, and they don't want to hear it. Your girl, your wife, your uncle, your cousin, they all like, what? Is Just leave me alone with that Bible stuff. I don't want to hear that. It used to be so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, it used to be fun when you were fornicating, committing adultery, smoking weed, doing all kind of evil towards God. You was fun. Now you're reading the Bible and you're so infatuated with the mysteries that's in the Bible. You're like, oh, did you know that King David said such and such? Did you know that this was this? They're like, no, I didn't know it and I don't care. Let's play 2K. Let's play Call of Duty. Come on, man. To hell with Call of Duty and 2K. I ain't played that crap in years. This Bible right here, I love this. This is where the mystery is at. I want to know why God said that in this passage. I want to know who these angels are. I want to know if, if there's a such thing as regeneration. I want to know the mysteries in the Bible. Read it in. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of, of Esaias, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, Read. and shall not understand. Come on. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. So they see us raising up, but they still can't perceive that this movement is of God. It's all oh, my son, he's just in a cult right now. He'll get tired of it, and he'll come back to the church. That's what they think. They got eyes. They see us getting bigger, 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 bigger. And they like, ah, that's just still a fly-by-night movement. Go ahead. For, the peop for this people's heart is wax gross, mm. and their ears are dull of hearing. Damn. And their eyes they have closed, mm. lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them, Read. but blessed are your eyes. Blessed are your eyes, you predestinated ones. Go ahead. For they see, mm -hmm. and your ears, for they hear. You see, they blessed are your eyes, for they see, and bless your ears, because they hear. Don't worry about them not understanding. You have the understanding. You keep on pushing and fighting, and you keep on being an example. And if it's the Lord's will, he'll wake them up in his time. But if he don't wake them up, you got to keep pushing, because you was predestinated. You was called into this thing. Go to Romans 11. You know what? Go to Matthew 15. I was reading this the other day. Matthew 15 and verse 13. Start at 12. Matthew chapter 15, verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended <laughs> after they heard this saying? Go ahead. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father have not planted, shall be rooted up. That's I'm telling you, a lot of our family members, that's them. Go ahead. Let them alone. You hear what Christ said? Leave them alone. Go ahead. They be blind leaders of the blind. <laughs> Go ahead. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. You hear that? Both of them going to fall into a ditch. I mean, they're going to die. 
That's what Christ. So some, I, I'm telling you, our people, a lot of them don't believe this. And it was ordained for them not to believe this. But it was ordained for you to believe it. That's what we're showing you. Go to Matthew 21. It's one of my favorite passages. I've been reading this a lot lately. Matthew 21, I want you to read verse um, 42. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 42. Jesus said unto them, did ye never read the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. Uh -huh. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Go ahead. Therefore say I unto you, read. the kingdom of God shall be taken from you mm. and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. So that's taken from the Pharisees and Sadducees and given to the northern kingdom. Go ahead. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. When it say fall on this stone shall be broken, meaning they stumble at Christ. They didn't believe on him. Even though he was there doing miracles, they said he cast out devils by the prince of the devils. Christ said, well, if, let me read it. I got to read it. I'm going to break it down. Matthew 12. You know I'm in the spirit right now. Y'all have mercy on me. I ain't talked like this in a while. Matthew chapter 12. I want you to read verse 20, 22. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. In so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. Go ahead. And, and when all I say dumb, it means he had a mental disorder. He couldn't speak. Right? That's why it says uh, dumb. Don't get offended. Read. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Read. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil. Hear that? They said only reason he able to make this man all of a sudden see and all of a sudden speak, even though he was blind and dumb from his from the, the, the childhood, he had a mental disorder, and he was blind. They said, oh, the only reason he was able to do that because he a devil. Does that make sense? When you seen a devil do that? Go ahead. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Mm. And if Satan cast out Satan... He is divided against himself. He said, so if, because the, the spirits in them were the spirit of devils. That's why I call unclean spirits devils. They had unclean spirits in them. So if he was a devil and he was taking devils out of them, then the devil would be against himself. He said, if Satan, greet again. And if Satan cast out Satan. If Satan cast out Satan. Go ahead. He is divided against himself. <laughs> how shall then his kingdom stand? How his kingdom going to stand? That's how you know that old Democratic and Republic stuff is BS. It's all to fool you. These demons and devils is together. They together. They believe the same thing. You may say, well, some of them say you can be a homosexual. And some of them believe on Jesus. No, they don't. Some of them believe on the devil. And the other one of them believe on the devil. Because they could not, America couldn't have worked all this time if Satan was against Satan. They all agree. All these different Protestant churches, Catholic churches, Presbyterian, and Seventh-day Adventists, they all believe some fundamental things. Your black ass ain't no Israelite. Jesus ain't black. You ain't got to keep no commandments and salvation for everybody. They all believe the same thing. When you look at their doctrine, you say, hold on. You believe God love everybody? I believe that. Check. So do they. Uh, do you believe that Jesus is black? I don't believe that. Check. So do they. Do you believe we got to keep the commandments to get the kingdom? Nope. Check. So do they. Why y'all might want well be together? They are all the devil. That's what we're showing you. That's what this Bible is showing you. All right? Go from there. Go back to uh, what we was at. Matthew 21. Well, we ain't got to read that. Go to um, Matthew 23 real quick. And then I'm going to close it out here. So be thankful that God gave you the understanding. Because everybody ain't got this wisdom. Matthew 23. Read uh, verse um, 17. Matthew chapter 23 and verse Start 17. 16. Verse 16. Woe unto you, ye blind gods, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Go ahead. Ye fools and blind. You hear what he called them? Ye fools and blind. For whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. So he calling the scribes and Pharisees, he calling them blind. They were blind. They couldn't see. But you see. That's why he said, blessed are your eyes, for you see. You understand. 
but they don't understand. This is spiritual, and God didn't get his understanding to everybody. He gave it to us. Now, with that understanding, he called us to ordain and ordained us to be prophets to the nations. We're supposed to be an example to our people and rule over these nations with a rod of iron when he give us that power, right? So I'm going to close it out there. I'm going to close it out there, y'all. So that was Ephesians chapter 1. Let's just read the rest of the verses so I can say we read the whole chapter. <laughs> I don't think it was nothing else in there I really wanted to touch on. So you was predestinated uh, for greatness. You belong here. It's where you're supposed to be. Don't let nobody take that from you. Um, Ephesians 1, 18. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance and in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, uh -huh. far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Go ahead. And I put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all, all in all. All praise. You got the videos? Just run through the videos real quick. So I had some videos I saved for the end. They're just quick promos of the men's conference just to show you what, what it is we're talking about in this class, how you was ordained, how you was predestinated to be here. You belong here. All right? Play that. And I'll fly, I'll fly. Software. I will finish oh, strong. Oh, Trying to make a change. This is outstanding. I'm gonna share my life in the midst of the dark. I All praise to the most high. Cut up a little bit too, we can barely hear. It just came out, it's just overwhelming. So many young black men together. Woo, I didn't know it's gonna feel like that. Have you ever seen something like this in Baltimore? No, no, never, no. No, and since you coming through our community, thank you, thank you for that. Yes, yes, thank you. All praises, all praises. Go to the next one. So this ain't no game, y'all. This is what we was called to do. This is what we was born to do. This is our, this is our uh, what did the scripture say? This is the whole duty of man, fear God and keep his commandments. And that's what we out here doing. To hell with a hater. We have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Yeah. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. And it is because of our effort toward getting straight to the root that people oftentimes think we are dealing in hate. Brothers and sisters, for generations, we've been a people living under the weight of oppression. Can you cut it up, please? From the days of Marcus Garvey's call for unity, to Martin Luther King's dream of freedom and equality, to Fred Hampton's unyielding fight for justice. We've been relentlessly pushed down, but we have never been broken. In these trying times, God has sent us a torchbearer to guide our path. Today, I introduce to you a beacon of hope. Bishop Nathaniel. Dang. With unwavering faith in Christ, he is here to lead the nation of Israel back to our rightful place by teaching us the sacred laws that have been our birthright and our salvation. Christ was the true, truest of all revolutionaries, and each one of us have to pattern ourselves in his image. 
Under his guidance, we will walk a path illuminated by the word of God, not the false promises of man. In his hands, the legacy of our past fuels a righteous and spiritual future, a future where we stand tall as children of God, as true Israelites, as free and dignified people at last. What is a revolutionary? Wait, there's two words found in the word revolutionary. Revolve, as in change. We're changing the minds of our people. We're revolting against all the lies this system has taught against us. The Bible prophesies about 144,000 true revolutionaries. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord! His word! His word! His word! His word! His word! I told you. I told you. This is what you was called to do, brothers. This is what you was called to do, brothers, sisters. We was predestinated to be here. We belong here. We're going to stay here. Keep the commandments. Faith in the Son of God. All right? What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is you.